Uh, well, talking about the effect on an adult brain. Yes. You've got two other. Yep. So just to recap, this is an adult brain. Yep. So this goes into the brain that far. Yep. That's an adult. Yep. If we then look at a 10 year old. Wow. Not only does it go far further into the brain, yeah. but the, the intensity extends, the high intensity extends far further into the brain. Wow. Um, now you have to remember that one of the effects of this technology is, um, is, is the effect on the brain itself. So it affects our mental processing. Mm -hmm. And when you look at that, and you understand that that is radiation, electromagnetic radiation, and that we are electrical beings, you can see how that is overriding mm. the electrical circuitry of our brain. Mm. So it's no wonder that people all of a sudden have got brain fog, they've got headaches. Headaches are really common. You can understand why there are ear, ear problems. Not sleeping well. Not sleeping well. But also when people just uh, uh, forget the word, uh, grasp yeah. for that word, people yeah. have become a little bit slower. Um, and of course with kids, yeah. ADHD, yeah. learning difficulties. Yeah. Behavioural difficulties. Behavioural difficulties, yeah. emotional difficulties. Yeah. There's probably a good time to also talk about the cumulative effect. Absolutely. Because some people go, well, you know, I only use it 10 minutes at a time, or, you know. Yeah, no. It's not what it's about, is it? No, it, it, it's, it's believed that there's a strong cumulative effect on this. So it's not just a question of you having a phone call and then going away and the effect going. Yeah. Is that they're actually, it, it does accumulate yeah. over a lifetime. Yeah. And the more it accumulates, the more hours you put into using your phone, then the higher the risk uh, of potential health effects. And one of the research um, studies in there that you that you talk about in the book is a child that has the phone next to its... Uh, there was some research that showed a child after a two-minute phone call. Yeah. Now, you imagine all the kids who... You've got one of your parents working late, so they say goodnight to them on the cordless phone mm -hmm. just before they go to bed. Mm -hmm. They might say goodnight for four or five minutes. A two-minute phone call in this research study was shown to disrupt the electrical activity of that child's, that child's brain for an hour afterwards. For an hour. For an now hour. you said cordless phone. Is that the same with cordless no, and a I smartphone? And, and I'm just, Im I'm yep. just imagining kids at yeah. home. You ah, know, gotcha. One of, the, one of yes. the parents is late from, from yes. work. Yep. They can't say goodnight, so they have a four or five minute on a, on a cordless mm -hmm. phone. Just before the child is supposed to go down to sleep. Yeah. Uh, and if you've got the whole brain activity has been shaken up and interrupted. And of course, one of the one of the side effects is not only um, mental processing and, um, and and cognitive processing, but it's also being able to go to sleep. Sleep at night. So, with adults or children, it's best not to make phone calls late at night, mm -hmm. uh, because the later it is in the night, the more likely it is to disrupt sleep. Yeah which then has the cumulative effect of all the health problems. Exactly. So the baby. So that's the 10 year old, yeah. and then we come, come now to the wow. five year old. That's a five year old. Now, but remember this is radiation. Yeah. This is radiation almost entirely filling the brain wow. of a five year old. So I don't have pictures of two year olds. Yeah. I, I can't imagine. Children's brains, their skulls are thinner. They have more water, so they're more conductive. Their immune systems aren't developed as much as adults, so they're much more prone to the health effects. Also, they're still growing and developed. Their brains are growing, their, their neurological systems are developing. And so to have this radiation in a child's brain is, is a very serious issue. Do you know where my thought process goes, thought process goes in, in, um, in seeing that and you're talking about that? You know when you say, and look, this is, this is not um, um, anything against mums and, you know, and, and using the... But you know when we see mums pushing the prams yeah. and they're often talking on their, their smartphones and then they'll put the smartphone on the top or right yeah. near, the, which is actually near the baby's head. Yeah. Now even though it's, they're not actually on, on yeah. because the smartphones are constantly downloading emails and all the rest of it, Absolutely. it is activated and that's constantly next, next to a baby's yeah. head, isn't it? That's really important. I mean, some research has shown effects from just standby on, on ordinary cell phones. Yeah. 
But when you have a smartphone that, as you say, is downloading all these messages, whenever there's a download, there's a massive surge in radiation. If so if it's close to anything, anyone, let alone a baby, yeah. they're affected by that. Yeah. Now, I have to stress that the thing is that, and that's what I'm trying to do, these mothers don't know that. that and yeah. the one thing I really do not want is any mother to feel guilty mm -hmm. because they haven't known. Yeah. And you can't beat yourself up about something you haven't known about. That's really important. There is enough guilt with motherhood already yeah. without adding to that. But it's important that they know that so that they can change. Yeah. And yet again, this is why you wrote these books. That's why. I, a, a large part, obviously, of this was, was I'm, I'm hoping the mothers will read it. Yeah. Because if you're an adult, you can make your own decisions. Yeah. And you can decide whether to listen to information or not. But the children don't have any choice. Well, while we're on babies, let's talk about the smartphones, for example, in blokes' pockets yeah. Um, yeah. and how that affects sperm count. Well, yeah, there's two, there's, I mean, if you're looking after the health of a child, you know, yeah. first of all, you take teenagers and they're responsible for a lot of their own health. They yeah. can make their own decision. And then you've got, say, the 10-year-olds, 8-year-olds, and then you've got the young ones who really do need a lot of guidance yeah. and are, are, are totally under your care. But then there are two other facets that affect the, the growth and development of that child. One is unborn children, mm -hmm. so when they're in utero, mm -hmm. we need to keep them free of exposure to this radiation. Mm -hmm. But then you go a step further and you start looking at um, the genetic foundation for that child. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at the DNA makeup. So then you look at um, the father's sperm and the mother's ovaries. Yeah. And a tremendous amount of guys walk around with their mobile phone in their front pocket. Yeah. So it's right next to their testicles where they're producing the sperm. And a lot of research, not just a small amount, there's a lot of research that's shown the impact on those sperm, both in terms of the um, reduction in quality, mm -hmm. but perhaps more importantly, the reduction of, qu uh, sorry, reduction of quantity, more importantly, the reduction in quality so the quality of the sperm is affected. Now that's the very, very beginnings of that little child. Mm. So it's yeah. affecting the DNA? Yeah, absolutely. So you, you want that to be as perfect as possible before you start. And hardly any research has been done with women in terms of their ovaries. Now, the, of course, the important thing is the difference is that, that men are producing sperm all the time. Mm -hmm. With women, Probably not, possibly not everyone knows. Girls are born with their ovaries and their eggs, sorry, not their ovaries, their eggs in place. Already, yep. Already. Yep. So they carry those eggs with them through their lifetime. So in utero, those eggs are forming while the, the baby girl's yes. forming. Yeah. So when those little girls are formed, they already have their eggs, they're ready to, to produce their own offspring. Yep. So it's even more important for them because those eggs run the risk of chronic exposure over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Now, not much research has been done on that, um, but the small amount of research that has been done, they've showed in some cases that not only are the eggs of the, 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 the person exposed, mm -hmm. or the mother exposed, not only have, have those eggs been affected, but the eggs of the offspring of the next generation. Have been affected. Have been affected. So one of the big messages here, just as we go to another break, is um, pregnant women especially to limit the amount of phone usage and not to carry it on their body. Absolutely. So preconception care. Yep. If you're trying to get pregnant, look after that side of things. Yep. As soon as you are pregnant, keep radiation away from your baby. Yeah. From both of you, obviously. Yeah. But particularly be aware so, you know, you don't want to be carrying phones anywhere near. And, and that, you know, will bring us into the question perhaps of passive radiation. Yeah. Okay. And it's, you know, it, what, what we're seeing here is we've really got a huge, we've really got to have a huge shift in paradigm of how we think and utilise this amazing technology, hasn't it? Yeah. For our future generations. It it's really is. And as more and more research is done, we understand that we really do have to be very careful with this. Yeah, yeah. Because it's likely that the full results might not be in for, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah. So, like smoking, how long did it take for smoking before they finally realised, okay, yeah, there is, there is evidence that we need to be careful. Yeah. 
we need to learn quicker this time. Yeah. Instead of wasting those 40 years with some of us getting sick, yeah. if we do something now, we can prevent that. Absolutely. And there is more than enough evidence to know that that's the wise thing to do. Okay, so we'll go to another break and we'll come back and talk about passive, yeah, yeah. passive Radi radiation. radiation. Okay. Yeah.